All right. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us. Today's co topic is about how the Click Clean cleaning device can help save time and eliminate interruptions during laparoscopic surgery. My name is Tim Buckley, and I'm the Vice President of Commercial Operations at Medion Bio. I'm very honored to introduce our two speakers this evening. We have two, Dr. Jay Rudan and Dr. Jessica Carlson. Dr. Rudan is a general surgeon out of Advent Health uh, just outside of Orlando. He is the current Florida governor of the American College of Surgeons and former president of SLS. Dr. Jessica Carlson is joining us from Curry Health Network at Gold, in Gold Beach, Oregon, and she's one of our early users of the ClickClean technology. The way this will be structured today is Dr. Rodan will give us a brief uh, summary of the technology and a discussion around his research and or regarding time considerations associated with scope clean and opacities. And Dr. Carlson at, will give us an interesting conversation around the realities of managing high risk patient profiles. And we've got some interesting cases we'll be reviewing during that. During this presentation, you can submit your questions directly to our panelists uh, via the chat feature on Zoom. And without further ado, I'd like to turn it over to Dr. Rodan. Well, thank you very much. Uh, as many of you may know, not may, may know, do know, when performing laparoscopic surgery, we always have this continued issue of, of scope fogging and smudging of the lens. And we cannot do our surgery unless you can't see. You can't do your open cases if you can't see. You can't do your laparoscopic cases if you can't see. You can't do your robotic cases if you can't see. So, so this problem that pervades all of us in any type of surgery we know is always looking for a solution. So a great solution that has recently come up is, this, is the click clean device uh, by Medion. The, uh, some of the other projects that I personally have been involved with through the years uh, with a variety of scope cleaning devices uh, all require either a extra setup and extra cost uh, that can be a little bit cumbersome to the operating room field uh, versus other devices where you actually have to take the scope out uh, to clean them. The ease of use of click clean is really what's attracted me to this product and I think is something that's worth uh, investigating for anyone that performs minimally invasive surgery out there uh, as it develops. As we know, when doing a procedure, we like to be efficient. So we don't have to take the, the scope out and put it back in. We don't like being interrupted. We, you know, when you're focused on your target organ that, or procedure that you're doing, whether it be a colectomy, idle hernia repair, gynecology, hysterectomy, urology, it's always a nuisance to take your scope out, especially when you're doing a robotic procedure. So anytime we have to disrupt the flow of the operation is very annoying, and we don't like to do that. Um, the way this works is very simple. Uh, it is a you place the camera in the click clean device. The camera itself. The camera lens itself is not exposed to the operative field, but when you're looking at something, uh, we, you know, typically it'll get smudged, or when there's uh, steam from harmonic or electric artery smoke or body fluids, you have to take the scope out. And this is as simple as, um, I use the analogy, it's like when you're in a airport and you know before you go sitting down on the toilet you just push the button and you get a fresh seat so in this situation you get a fresh view it's, i know it's a little bit of a stretch but you get a fresh view of what you're looking at uh, by just clicking the button and then you can see what's going on in, without interruption to your case so and, it, and the simplicity is really the beauty behind this device uh, as you can see in the next video or in a laparoscopic case where it gets a little smudged you, you one two three squeeze the, the button and instant you can see what you're doing very very simple uh, I, I've had an interest in this topic for quite a while investigating many of the devices uh, a couple of years ago with one of my students
students from the University of Central Florida. We just very, did a very quick uh, IRB study uh, where we just observed, just observation observed uh, relatively short OR cases. Uh, and we can see by what we uh, noticed, 83% of the cases did require scope cleaning and withdrawal during the time of the um, procedure anywhere uh, between zero and six times. For In these cases, were mostly gynecology cases or lap coli. Uh, typically a 15 minute case and you can see you can lose up to 82 seconds on just a very quick pro uh, sequential study that we did and in cases that actually had some actually had a fair amount of blood loss up to 200 cc's so the need definitely is justified by even just very short simple cases in the observational study we did there's other other uh peer-reviewed publications out there. This one from the British Journal of Surgery, September 2018. And uh, to no surprise, when we're under stress, such as the stress of not being able to see, you're prone to make more mistakes. I don't think that's anything, uh, that that's any, any monumental note, note that the surgeons did, but certainly to quantitate it and qualify it is very important. And up to two-thirds of the time, these these, this stress was made these surgeons prone to error. Uh, and as I mentioned before, seeing the surgical field is key. And the simple solution is probably the best. It's whenever we, we, we face a problem with the most simple, cost-effective uh, solution that will eliminate the problem is always going to be in the best interest. So, uh, as noted, when we have a dirty windshield, we want to clean it because we don't want to have any vascular injuries, bowel injuries, or, or ureter injuries specifically uh, to our patients. And it's simple and safe. It really doesn't add. It, it's a device that has zero risk and all benefit. So, it just makes sense to use a, something as uh, easy as click clean in your surgical procedure. Thanks. Dr. Carlson? I'm here. Hello. Well, thank you for having me. So where I live, I tend to see a large population of high-risk patients as well as difficult cholecystectomies and a tendency of patients to wait around uh, before coming into the hospital. So I tend to see a lot of perforated appendicitis cases as well. So because of the difficult patients that I see for me, it's really imperative that I have perfect view during surgery. I want a clean screen. I don't want to be fighting a blurry camera while I'm trying to do a difficult dissection. Also, if I have any bleeding during surgery or splatter, I want to be able to take care of that right away and not have to remove my camera from the patient, clean it, and then put it back in. And what I find is if I have clean view of surgery, that gives me more efficient dissection, more efficient surgery. And again, it takes less, uh, shorter surgery time equals less anesthesia for the patient. And that's better for all of us. So this first patient that I would like to present is a 67-year-old male with a complicated past medical history who was in the hospital for four days and the medicine service called me on day four and this patient had imaging consistent with acute on chronic cholecystitis. So for this case, I already know going in, it's going to be difficult and a clean camera is exactly what I need. So you can see uh, in the first video here, I'm just going to click on this so you can see, uh, this gallbladder is pretty nasty business. I've already taken down a lot of the adhesions of the omentum that are stuck to this. The neck of this gallbladder is very stuck to everything and including, you know, duodenum, you've got common bile ducts down there, colon, everything is very stuck. So for me, visualization is so important to make sure that I can do this operation safely. So I make the decision that it's just inflammation going on at the neck of this gallbladder, and I don't think I can safely do this uh, dissection. 
the decisions made to place the cholecystostomy tube. I switched my camera out to put in, uh, you know, a different device for a uh, cautery and a different retractor. You can see I switched to my five millimeter scope that does not have the quick clean device on it. And you can see my visualization is much worse. I have a lot of blurry edges around the screen. Um, there's a, a, the steam and the coating on the film on the front of the screen. And so it's, it's much challenging and ended up switching back to my quick clean camera so I could get better visualization of that. So you can also see here with my click clean on the left, I can just with the click of a button clean that screen right away to get a good visualization of that. If I go over here without the click clean, I try to wipe that camera on the liver to try to get a clear view, but still I'm just not attaining that clear picture that I have on the left side. There we go. So this next patient presentation I'd like to discuss is a 38-year-old female with long-standing biliary colic symptoms. Intraoperatively, look in there, and it's a lot more inflammation than I would anticipate just for a simple biliary colic, cholecystectomy. Um, she's really found to have some chronic cholecystitis. And I'll show you the visualization here. So even though I'm using a lot of cautery with this harmonic scalpel to dissect the gallbladder off of the liver bed and all of that steam and debris and liquid, um, I can just click that click clean and that camera is just going to be a clear view instantly. I'm not having to stop this dissection, pull the camera out, clean the camera and put it back in again. So really the special polymer materials that are covered in that scope are repelling all the smoke that's coming from the harmonic scalpel device. Thank you so much. Well, that was great. Thank you so much, Dr. Carlson and Dr. Redan. And, and now uh, feel free to submit questions. Um, you can via the chat. Um, and yeah, thanks again for your time. Okay, so I'm I'm sorting through some of the questions that came in during the uh, presentation, and so I have a question from the audience. Uh, it reads more about the strate strategies for justifying the click clean with the hospital's value analysis kit committee, and and just to add a little color, and then I, I'd love to hear from both of you your opinion on this, but. Uh, you know, from my perspective, there are attributes of this product that are kind of easy to connect the dots, you know, such as the time savings as it directly correlates to the expenses or perhaps even reduction of scope refurbishment fees due to reduced scissor nicks and that type of thing. But, you know, but thanks to Dr. Redan's data, your study nicely kind of summarized the time involved with what I'll call routine cleanings. Um, and sometimes you showed in aggregate, it can it potentially could equal in the, in the minutes. However, I want to... I want to explore your second point, Dr. Rodan, regarding surgeon stress. It's, therefore, I, I guess my question would be, you know, how, how could a colleague articulate to their VAC how a quick clean might be able to help uh, what I'll call surgeon frustration? Any pointers there? I, I think for me, uh, you know, how I discuss this with my administration and uh, you know, the cost police, as I call them at our hospital, um, is just that for me, I want every surgery to be as safe as possible for the patients. And that's one thing that your committees and your admin team are never going to argue with about. They can't argue against patient safety. So for me, I said, you know, if I can have the best visualization possible, I'm performing the safest surgery possible. And for me, I just explained to them how much, you know, if you have clear visualization, I'm avoiding, you know, iatrogenic injury to bowel or to common bile duct or to ureters or whatever important structure is near my dissection. And so for me, it's definitely worth the cost to have less stress because I'm not irritated or frustrated by a dirty camera that I'm moving in and out of the patient and also just to 
um, know that I can see clearly and I'm calm during these difficult dissections. Right. Very good. And, and, you know, it's, uh, you know, I, you know, cause I personally feel, you know, surgeon stress is, you know, very often overlooked or, you know, discounted because, you know, in fact, I just read an interesting study by the Journal of American Medical Association about overused term, you know, physician burnout. But, you know, but, but what I didn't fully appreciate was what that actually meant because they went through a definition. You know, I, in my, in my mind, I was picturing this Jerry Maguire moment when you're walking off the job with the goldfish, but, you know, this was more about uh, looking into the rigors of your profession and, you know, and slowly creating over time what they call kind of this emotional distancing, uh, but with not only your job, but, but, but the staff as well. So, so I guess my question would be, you know, how might you justify the click clean? I mean, could it perhaps reduce tensions amongst the staff between the surgeon and scope tech? I mean, did, did that play into the dialogue at all? I mean, Definitely helps with team dynamics in the operating room. I work with a lot of medical students. I pretty much always have a medical student with me at all times. And, you know, they're usually the ones driving the camera. You're teaching them how to, to you know, operate the camera appropriately. And so sometimes I will have the exact perfect angle of the camera that I want. You're dissecting. Everything's looking good. It, everything's retracted perfectly. You have the view you want. And then the camera gets splattered. Well, then you're taking the camera out. You're, you know, I can't trust the medical student to do that. So now I have to let go of my retraction. I have to clean the camera, put it back in. And then it takes a minute or two to get everything set up back again. And I never quite get that same view that I was at. Or maybe it takes me three minutes to get back to where I was and reset. And so this way, just with a click of the button, I'm not having to change my focus you know, pull the camera out, leave the view of the dissection. It's like, oh, click of the button, camera's clean again. I can just continue with that. And so, yes, if the surgeon's less frustrated, the medical student's less frustrated, the whole team is, is a great dynamic. So for me, this has been a really valuable tool. I've really enjoyed working with it. Great. And thank you for that. And and so, Dr. Rodan, um, there's a question that came from the chat to you specifically, it says, uh, what patients or conditions would you personally anticipate a higher chance of blood loss during the procedure? And then, okay, I'm hearing from, all right, and maybe I'll, I'll flip that one to Dr. Carlson as well. That Other procedures that I expect a higher chance of blood loss during, right. during dissection? Um, so I think some of the chronic cholecystitis patients that I take care of where that gallbladder is really stuck in there and you're trying to just, you know, chisel it out from the liver, sometimes you can get a little liver bleeding where that can really splatter on the camera and cause problems. Um, you know, any, any sort of uh, trauma patient, although sometimes we end up doing laparotomies for those, but um, any, any sort of chronic inflammation or infection, you know, um, a perforated stigmoid diverticulitis um, that has a lot of inflammation where you're trying to do dissection, um, you know, a ruptured appendicitis, anything where you think you're going to have a lot of, um, you know, blood spots or, um, you know, purulent drainage, whatever, that's really going to clog the front of your screen. Just having the ability to clean it quickly, I think, is really helpful. I know. Um, I was doing a case and a gynecologist came in while I was doing a gallbladder case because it was a mutual patient. He said, hey, will you take a look around at her ovaries and her uterus while you're doing this case? And I said, sure. And he was really impressed by how easy it was as I was looking in the pelvis and moving, you know, some of the bowel out of the way so we could get a good visualization of, of uterus and ovaries. He was like, wow, this is really great. I can see well. So um, I think it has a lot of benefits for really any surgery that you're doing in the abdomen that you're using a laparoscopic scope for. I mean, I use it for all of my laparoscopic cases. So, so I, th I think the, probably the most important point, this is a safety issue. All right. Every time you pull the scope out to clean it, risk is involved because you're not visualizing instruments in the peritoneal cavity. It doesn't matter what procedure you're doing. So the key here is you never have to take the scope out. And, that, and that's pretty much the most important part of this invention. 
it, it does not matter what type of procedure you're doing. It does not matter about blood loss. It does not matter about fog. It does not matter about anything. It only matters that you can see it because in minimally invasive surgery, laparoscopic surgery, robotic surgery, whatever we're doing, if you cannot see what you're doing, there is danger. And the purposes of this device is to prevent danger. You can see, so if you can see, you can do it. And that's clearly the most important bottom line of what the point is we need to convey tonight. Right. Yeah, I, no, I, I, I agree. And then, and, and there's a couple, a couple more questions, I guess, that are rolling in, and, and I appreciate everyone's time tonight. Um, so I think, that, oh, this one's a little bit more product-oriented. Uh, okay, how does Dr. Carlson ensure that ClickClean is never submerged in liquid? And I guess that's coming from the, just on the technical side, the, the distal tip of this product is not uh, what I'll call watertight. It's, it's designed to... Uh, it's designed to withstand a shower, uh, but not a long bath is the best way to put it. But uh, are there any techniques, Dr. Carlson, to, you know, uh, ergonomically to make sure you don't get it submerged? Right. So this is a, a learning curve for students. And so I have a little talk with whoever's driving my camera, which is usually the student or, um, you know, a scrub tech or whatever your assistant. I tell them before we start the case, remember, we have the quick clean. You cannot dunk this underwater. It does not swim. So, uh, you know, we have that talk right before. And then I always make a real conscious effort to say, okay, if we're going to change ports or whatever, or you're taking the camera in and out, like just being cautious that you're not pushing the camera straight down into some momentum or bow, but that you're actually being cautious and keeping that up above, you know, more along the anterior abdominal wall as you're entering the abdomen. So you're making sure you're not, you know, submerging it in any liquid that could be there. Also, if I irrigate, um, you know, the liver bed or irrigate the pelvis, whatever I need to irrigate, I'm always telling my camera operator, hey, I'm going to irrigate right now. Why don't you pull the camera back a little bit? Um, so we make sure that, you know, it can be splattered. That's fine. But I don't want to, you know, give it a good power wash with my ear suction irrigator device you know um yeah that's a good good point T tim i'd like to go back to the question on value analysis that you were talking about before oh uh, great I, I think that what i would suggest to anyone that's interested or, or wants to prove quote unquote its value is to take to your value analysis committee two gallbladders or two hysterectomies or two whatever one with click clean and one without and and just run the videos side by side and let the value analysis committee see which procedure can you see better on and let them make a judgment on their own uh i think it's as simple as that the it's not the a value analysis evaluation it's a safety risk management evaluation so if the value analysis committee feels it is value is more important than patient safety i said great like give me your names and we'll i'll we'll take that down so if there's complication i know who to uh who to bring to risk management who doesn't think it's safety you know you can you can strong arm, arm them like that or you can say look do you want us do you want to have an operation where you can see what you're doing or would you rather have an operation where you can't i'll leave the decision up to you and i'll be glad to uh, you know see what's going on so there's two ways you can do it. You know, you can do it the nice way or you can do it the strong way. <laughs> we can do this the easy way. We can do this the hard way. I, no. I, no. I, I like it. Um, okay, good. And then uh, last few questions, if you don't mind, just, uh, just maybe two or three more. But, um, you know, oh, I guess this might be coming from, uh, I know we have some individuals from, uh, from our development team, but uh, online right now. But what, what can happen in those brief moments where if you had to extract the scope to do an external cleaning, I mean, what can happen? Is it, is it? Well, when I, where I train residents and fellows and we have new people, you have to tell them just don't move, just stay still. I don't want you doing anything while we take the scope out because there's potential harm to the patient. They have to have to stop the operation and put it on pause 
and, and hopefully you don't have any problem. I mean, not yes, you're not going ninety nine percent of the time you're not going to have a problem. However, when you have the click clean device in the patient, you don't have to do any of that. You you you're, you're zero scope control all time. It's it's a, it's a this is a very simple. Doesn't require a lot of thought. Anything to add on that, Dr. Carlson? Or no, I totally agree. I mean, anytime you have you know a bunch of instruments in the abdomen and you are not looking what those are happening to those, um, and you personally are not holding them, sometimes you have an assistant holding them. It it is uh, you know it makes you nervous for sure because you know safety is the most important thing. We don't want any unnecessary injuries. Good, very good. And then, okay, well then, last in, in interest of your times, so I'll one more, and I think I know who this question came from. Uh, what, uh, how, how do you, Dr. Carlson, ensure that the distal end of the scope is fully seated within the distal end of the click clean? <laughs> so, kind of a setup pearl for your technicians. Any any instructions you recommend for the technicians? Yeah, so what I've been having the technicians do actually is I have them hand me the camera with the click clean on it unlocked, and then I actually make sure that it's seated myself, and then I lock it myself. And then that way I know I'm happy with it from the very beginning. Um, that's, that's what I've been doing. Uh, I had them doing it, and then a couple of times I didn't feel like they had seated it quite properly, and I'm like, if I do it myself, I know that it's seated perfectly. I'm giving it a good wiggle and locking it down. Um, that's just how I do it. Okay. Well, great. Well, I just want to, well, I think we'll go ahead and, and end it there. Um, and thank you so much for your time. Um, so on behalf of the audience, the, you know, Dr. Carlson, Dr. Rudan, I just want to thank you both. Um, and for those in the audience, thank you for participating. And if you'd like to arrange a free demo, please email us at marketing at medionbio.com. And that's M-E-D-E-O-N-B-I-O.com. And I wish you all a good night and a stress-free surgery day tomorrow. Have a good night, guys. Thanks, doctors. Thank you. Thank you.